Hi, you're watching Reflections. Reflections is a TV show about the ministry and mission of Paducah Cooperative Ministry. PCM is a local help agency here in Paducah that helps out those in our community who sometimes need a little extra help in their lives. Our mission is to do God's work with human hands. My name is Jay Gottman and I'm the lead minister at First Christian Church here in Paducah and I'm excited today to welcome our three guests who are here to talk to us about an exciting new program called Breaking Barriers and how that ministry is changing our community. So I want to welcome our three guests today. It's good to welcome Christy Batts who is the Executive Director of Crossroads Incorporated. Karen Burton, who is on staff at Paducah Cooperative Ministry, and Eloise Brown, who is a facilitator with the Breaking Barriers program. Welcome to all three of you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to start out and ask you, Karen, to describe Breaking Barriers and how that got started, and then also to talk a little bit about the Fresh Start Project and that ministry at PCM. Well, Breaking Barriers is a um, derivative, if you will, from the Fresh Start Project. And it's Fresh Start started about 2007. Um, I had been doing jail ministry with my church. And out of that came a compassion and an empathy for the young ladies that were in the jail situation. Um, I found out that they were wanting to do something different, wanting to make a change, but didn't know how to do it. And at that time, I didn't know what to do for them. I just knew that I, something had to be done. So um, that day, after I had visited the jail, I went to Heidi, who is our executive director at PCM, and I said, Heidi, is there something that we can do for these young ladies in the jail? Um, I just have a, a compelling compassion for them to do something, I don't know what. And she said, you know, it's funny you should ask that. I just got an email about this military property and um, they're wanting to give it to um, a project that would help homeless people. So maybe we can incorporate that with this and come up with something. She said, write me a proposal. And out of that, we came up with the Fresh Start Project that would house young women coming out of jail, the McCracken County Jail to start, um, about eight. And um, in a residential facility, help them with life skills, budgeting skills, learning skills, um, processing their thinking di towards a different end. And um, that's what happened. Hmm. So we submitted the proposal through the city of Paducah to the government, military government and so forth, and got accepted. Hmm. And we have a building. It's located at 2001. Um, set North 12th Street. However, dealing with your government, dealing with bureaucracy, they have not released the deed to us. So we have a building that we can't utilize. Mm -hmm. We have a project that we can't uh, facilitate because we don't have the building. And so we are sitting there. We have people that were ready to go and do something. So we said, why don't we do a pre-program with break, with, with which was then without a name, but breaking barriers was the concept. And so we went about getting trained for the breaking barriers program. The staff did, we have about 15 volunteers that went through this training with us. And um, that's basically how breaking barriers came about. After we got trained, we said we would go back into McCracken County Jail. We would identify women who were looking for a change in their lifestyles, um, wanting to do something different once they got out, facilitate this program with them. It's a 17 session program. It'll take about three months to get through. Um, and basically, that's how it started. Um, you know, in a nutshell, really. Uh, we've had great success with it. We have about eight women that are down there that are taking this program. They are excited about it. Um, they're using the terminology. They are um, embracing the concepts of the program. I mean, it is just great. It does my heart well to see that um, what started as an, a thought, an idea, is turning into something that is really going to be effective in this community. That's wonderful. And how many 
women can go through the program at any one time? Well, right now there's eight. I mean, we're just kind of, you know, treading water right now. Mm -hmm. We'd like to see as many that want to go through, mm -hmm. go through it. But right now we've identified eight. They're not necessarily the eight that will go through the Fresh Start project. Mm -hmm. Um, but they are eight that when they get finished with this Breaking Barriers program, um, they, be, they will be well equipped with the right tools to be able to um, effect a change in their life. Mm -hmm. Eloise, I know you've been a part of uh, the program and facilitating, and could you tell me how you got involved in some of the changes and, and some of the wonderful things that you've been seeing take place? Well, um I was in the housing program for Purdue Cooperative Ministry, um, and it was brought to my attention of breaking barriers, mm -hmm. uh, how women can have another outlook on things where I didn't be in and they're at, you mm -hmm. know. And I say, yeah, because it was time for me to make a change, a big change, uh, where I came from. It wasn't. It wasn't the best, mm. you know, I made some bad choices. Mm -hmm. I dealt with some bad people mm -hmm. and I made a change. And if I can do it and where I came from, I know they can do it too, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it helped me out a lot to meet Miss Karen mm -hmm. because I was stuck in a rut. And a rut is like one of the the chapters in there, you know, you get stuck in a rut, and I was in a rut, and I didn't know how to get out, and she brought it to my attention, so I went to the meeting, mm -hmm. you know, at first I had that frame of mind of, okay, I might do it, I might not, you know, mm -hmm. but it caught my attention off, off the top, so mm -hmm. uh, since then I've been working with Breaking Barriers and still working. Um, the classes at PCM, okay. and everything's working. I mean, I've made a change in my life that I'm proud of. And with breaking barriers, it gives you an easier way to look at things. Um, some of the things you look at, like, uh, they call it self-talk. It's like, I can take what you say and turn it into what I want it to, what you, what I want you to say. Mm. and. That's what I used to do a lot. You know, you, when you're growing up, you hear all sorts of things, you know, and that sticks with a person as they grow. And you will always think that you're less than the next person, which you're not. Mm -hmm. But as growing up in a broken home, that's what you would think, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So with breaking barriers, they gave me the opportunity to reach inside me, find me. Mm -hmm. Don't go off what somebody done said in your past where on that one right here, I had to change. I had to change the, the things that was negative in my life, you know. Um, as they call it, I had a, I had a, my window of concern, my belief window, but my belief window was uh -huh. kind of like messed up. Okay. You know? And with the help of Miss Karen and Miss Heidi and all the other ladies that's at PCM that's going through this with me, they really helped me. They helped me more than they know they helped me. Okay. And I just want to help somebody else. Sure. And you mentioned there are 17 different life skills sessions in, in sessions the, in the program. In the program. Okay. And what are some of the some of the skills that are taught? Some of the modules in that session. Well, one of the things, and I have to, I just have to say that we are so proud of Eloise. I mean, from when she came to us as a, a broken person, hard in the face and, and, and just angry at the world to where she is now. Um, and, and it's not so much anything that we all did for her. It was what she reached down inside to get for herself, and that is the main component of change, is to first become aware mm -hmm. that you need change and want change, and that's what she did, and she did that on her own. 
We just gave her the tools to work with. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we teach in the Breaking Barriers, to give you the tools that you can work with, to identify what your belief windows are and what you grew up with that has made this part of you, inside of you, and how to effectively go about changing that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Christy's real good at that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Christy, you're at Crossroads and uh, our viewers would probably like to know what Crossroads is about and how that fits in with, with breaking barriers and, and that programming. Well, at, at Crossroads, we monitor misdemeanor probation. Uh, basically, uh, a client will be given conditional discharge time, which is a jail sentence that they do not have to serve, but they may have some uh, obligations that they have to fulfill in order to not have to serve that jail sentence. and. Uh, we monitor that and we report back to the courts and and uh, make sure that their court-ordered obligations are finished and um, if they're not then they normally will end up having to serve that jail sentence um, so uh, for me it allows them to stay with their families allows them to keep their jobs you know allows the next generation not to see a parent going in and out of jail I mean, you know mm -hmm. it, there are so many there's so many wonderful things about it um, and that's that's how I came to to uh, be involved with breaking barriers, um, basically, uh, you know, we have the court ordered obligations, but this was something that was just so powerful that um, I thought, well, I want to be involved with that, you know, with the Paducah Cooperative Ministries. Mm -hmm. um, someday, someday I would love to see classes in Crossroads. I would love to see that as, as part of Crossroads um, where, you know, they, they could have them, they could have the classes in the jail, but then also mm -hmm. they would have the, you know, anyone would have the opportunity to attend that class uh, because that it is a, it is a powerful class. And, and Karen was talking about the tools to make change. Um, I think that's what I like so much about this program. Um, you know, in a world that's filled with self-help mm -hmm. books and self-help tools and, um, you know, they tell you these steps that you have to follow and almost name your problems for you. And um, this program doesn't. It gives you tools and you really search for your answers and you search for, for you know, you search for your own problems. You search for your own answers and, and it allows you to kind of, you know, like, like you said, kind of dig into yourself and, and look. and. Um, it just gives you tools and gives you the equipment to, you know, such we talked about the awareness. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you can't you can't solve a problem if you're not aware that there is a problem. Mm -hmm. um, once you're aware of that, you know, you identify it as a rut. Um, you know, I've always looked at ruts as, you know, well, I've worn the same hairstyle for 15 years or whatever, and that's not the type of rut we're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. We're talking about behavioral ruts. Um, you where do you do the same thing all the time. You do the same thing over and over and over again, but mm -hmm. expect a different result. Sure. And um, and so at some point in time, you have to plug in that rut. There's a there's a model in the book that is it's 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 phenomenally powerful. Mm -hmm. You you plug you plug your your beliefs in. You you plug your actions in. As you go through this model, you show your result, which feeds back mm -hmm. to the very beginning as to as to your belief. And um, one of the most important questions and the most impactful question for me was um, the very last question says, will this, will this serve my long-term needs? Hmm. And um, for me now, oh, hmm. that, that, question is, that question is at the forefront of every decision I make now. Hmm. Um, you know, I, I, whether I'm buying patio furniture, whether I'm, you know, whatever. <laughs> Eloise laughs because I talked about digging a hole in my backyard to put a little pond in. Uh -huh. And my husband and I set it down in there and it, the liner was above the ground a little bit. He said, we can stack up rock to it, you know. And I said, oh, no, no, no. This, is this, this going to meet my long-term <laughs> needs? And he's going, you know, it's 102 degrees outside. We're in the sun. And I'm out there digging like a mad woman talking to myself mm -hmm. about how this isn't going to meet my long-term needs. I'm going to want it dug up in three weeks. I'm not going to like it. And I'm out there throwing dirt over my shoulder. Uh -huh. And he's just kind of standing there looking at me. <laughs> but when we put the liner in and it went all the way in, I'm like, yes, now that will meet my long-term needs. And so I ask myself that before I buy anything now, before, you know, if, if my husband and I are in an argument, is what I'm fixing to say to him going to meet my long-term needs? It, it, 
sure. it's every aspect of your life this this program is 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 relevant uh it's 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 just completely usable so it's about evaluating your behavior, behavior. finding the behavior that you want to have and then the mm -hmm. feedback loop of is this meeting my needs long term mm -hmm. and helping you set goals right. in the future right, right. Yeah. And, and and it's all based on your belief well, your and it's based on four human needs and and we've we've discovered that there are four needs to love and to love and be loved mm -hmm. to live to survive and variety. So all of that behavior, if you put it through this model, and I meant to bring it with me today, and mm -hmm. I'm so sorry I didn't, but if you put that basic belief um, pattern through the model, the behavior model that we have, mm -hmm. it all comes back to one of those four basic needs, mm -hmm. you know, that you are trying to um, assess within yourself, mm -hmm. you know. So are you trying to survive? Are you trying to be loved? You know, are you trying to love someone? You know, so when you run it through mm -hmm. that model and it comes back, is that going to meet your needs over time? Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can look at that model and say yes or no. And if it's no, then you have to look at your basic belief principle and say there's a faulty belief on that principle, a mm. faulty principle on that belief window. Then you can go about that change. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, Eloise, what are your long-term goals now? You know, it sounds like you're very hopeful and, and this program has made a change in your life. What, what are your long-term goals and wants and what's feeding you? Well, what's feeding me now? Um, I'm working on my GED through mm -hmm. Paducah Cooperative Ministry. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's teaching me to be independent. I always had somebody taking care of me. You know, um, um, I had an addiction. You know, it's 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 a day to day addiction. You know, it used to be addiction just to wake up in the morning to just to get into something. You know, mm -hmm. just because I was free. But now I get up, my addiction is to take care of me. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's not to put other people before me like I used to. And I used to be mean, I used to be real. I had a, I had a screak. <laughs> I just, had uh, no yes, <laughs> I had a real bad screak of anger <laughs> where um, people can say something to me and they don't mean no harm, you know, and it's like I would just snap. If things don't, if they don't say what I want to say, I don't want to hear it. And mm -hmm. I just, you know, I have that in me where I was growing up, you know, and I had to have that tough side. Mm -hmm. So when nobody run over me, because mm -hmm. I had been ran over so much, when I got out of uh, being incarcerated, it was hard for somebody, it was hard for me to let somebody tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and working with Miss Karen ain't easy. I mean, because <laughs> she, she's bossy, huh? She she's gonna let you know. And this control thing going on, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it's she showed me a lot throughout this program. I mean, throughout you know a lot of things I couldn't see myself. Mm -hmm. You know, she she breaks it down for me, and she showed me a different way of looking at it, where I can be like. Why didn't you just say that at first, you know, mm -hmm. instead of you got to go through the book and the definition and this and that. And she had it bad, making me look up words I didn't understand. And it's like, <laughs> she was like, well, next week you tell me what that means. And I'm looking at her like, why don't you just tell me? I'm sitting here, <laughs> you know. But it was her way of showing me, you know, to get things done, you have to put forth effort. You got to put in the effort. Right. Do you find, uh, having been through the system and having been incarcerated, going back, you obviously bring something to those to those women in jail that you can say this program is really exciting and I want you to be involved with it. Is it hard for some of the women there who maybe used to be where you were to accept that this program may work for them and? How do you convince them that this is a good deal for them? She just opens her mouth. <laughs> she just opens her mouth, and those girls just drink it in. They love her, and they, they've they been there, and they know that she's real with it, mm -hmm. and they just drink her in. Yeah, I don't sugarcoat nothing for nobody. Okay. She's real. That's, that's not me. I can't, I don't see myself doing it because then nobody sugarcoated it for me, mm -hmm. you know? 
Yeah. And when they did, they ended up in trouble. Yeah. So, what yeah. was the, what was the toughest part for you uh, starting out? You had this tough exterior, and finally, Karen and others were able to break through to that. What what was the hardest part out of out of all the process? The hardest part was opening up, mm -hmm. communicating with them. That was the hardest part. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I had trouble with talking to people. You know, it, if it wasn't mean, I wasn't gonna open my mouth or mm -hmm. if it wasn't gonna hurt your feelings, you know, I really didn't have nothing to say unless I'm looking at you in a messed up way, you know, and mm -hmm. I don't know, it's just some, just one day I just was like, I'm gonna get a shot, you know, mm -hmm. and I froze when I started opening up, you know, because I'm, it was like, okay, you just in my life for a moment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, that's how it's been all my life. You're there for a second and then you're gone. Mm -hmm. You disappear. And then I'm left with me. Mm -hmm. So I got to roll all those feelings back up and hopefully I don't hear it on the streets. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was, it was tough. It was. So part of this program is knowing that people care about you right. and they're going to stick with you. And then I, I assume that there's some kind of component that forms a support group. You know, as you're working with the ladies in the jail and as as they begin to to be released back in back into society, is there a, a community component or a support group? Well, that that's phase? in the works right now. We would like to have a mentoring support group mm -hmm. for these ladies when they do get out. Mm -hmm. um, it would be at Paducah Cooperative Ministry. Mm -hmm. Um, where they can come in if they're having problems and we can sit down and, you know, reiterate what they went through in the um, program or just talk, mm -hmm. just someone to be there because I think that was the biggest thing that helped Eloise. There was mm -hmm. just somebody there that cared that she could talk to, she can blow off steam with, mm -hmm. you know, and somebody that was not going to be affected by her attitude, her mood or her anger and let her calm down and then talk her through whatever problems or situations she was having. Sure. We talk about the circle of concern and the circle of influence mm -hmm. in breaking barriers. Mm -hmm. The circle of concern is a great big outer circle and that's the circle of all the things we worry about, the things we can do nothing about, mm -hmm. okay? And, and that's where we spend so much of our time in that big circle of concern mm -hmm. and you feel no power there because mm -hmm. you can't do anything. But the circle of influence is that small circle inside that larger circle. That's the, inf the circle where we have empowerment. That's the circle where we can do something about our situations and our circumstances. So mm -hmm. when that circle of influence enlarges and overtakes that circle of concern, which is what's happening with her now, mm -hmm. then you start to get that holistic type of behavior. Sure. How many how many women have gone through the program so far and when did the program officially get started in the in the system? We started with this summer mm -hmm. the breaking barriers. The breaking barriers. We we went through um, 15 volunteers went through the um, breaking barriers and they, it ranges from professional women like Christy, teachers, mm -hmm. homemakers, um, ex-alcoholics, mm -hmm. pastors, um, so we had a whole walk, uh, different walk of life that mm -hmm. went through the program. We had a facilitator come from uh, South, South Palo Alto, mm -hmm. California, mm -hmm. that um, stayed for a week and took us through this program ourselves. Mm -hmm. And even us who went through it discovered so much in, within ourselves, you know, that oh, we didn't yes. necessarily know was there. <laughs> sure. I know? went home, I think one night I went home and, and everything I did, I had what I would call an aha moment. Okay. I mean, literally every, almost every thought I had, I came in the next day and and and, and begin to begin to tell them about it. And uh, and the person who was facilitating to us, he says, "You got it," because mm -hmm. I began to see beliefs that once they were revealed to me, they didn't make any sense whatsoever. You know, okay, sure. they, they literally, some of them were just, were just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and, and it was, it was tiny things, but all those tiny things that make me who I am, yeah. you know, what you believe is going to dictate your, your rules in your life. You know, mm -hmm. sure. like if I believe that all dogs are vicious, that's one of the examples they get, then 
you've got your if then. If I see a dog, then I'm going to run. Sure. Or what, you know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, kick it. What, you know, and um, so, you know, we all believe we control ourselves, but we don't actually make our own rules. Our beliefs mm -hmm. dictate our rules. And, you know, these are spot on, you know, one decision after another. Sure. And um, so you get that belief changed, you get your action changed, you get your end result changed. Yeah, yeah, and to get those end results, uh, I guess my, my question, because our time's starting to run out, what, what kind of things do you need help with from the community, ways that people can get involved, needs that Breaking Barriers uh, currently has to help the program go to the next level or to incorporate more ladies into the program? What, what kind of things would be helpful for someone watching who might want to help out? Well, Heidi's big word is always educate, you mm -hmm. know, to educate the community that there is a problem, um, there are homeless women coming out of jail, and, and mm -hmm. they, there's a need to have them placed somewhere. Um, so if you want to volunteer, you know, mm -hmm. at PCM, we will always try to find a place for you to do that. Not so much necessarily with breaking barriers right now, but later on in the mentoring part of it, later on when we open up the Project Fresh Start, there'll be need for volunteers and mentors. Financially, you know, we're mm -hmm. going to have to fund the Fresh Start Project. Mm -hmm. um, if there's someone out there where this type of ministry touches their heart, you know, contact PCM and, mm -hmm. you know, make a contribution and donation towards this project. Is there a cost for the materials per person uh, to be trained? What are, what are some of the costs? I, I think it was like $500 okay. per person mm -hmm. to do this. Okay. And, um, and for 15 people, that was quite of an expense. Sure but, it was. Um, you know, after they come out of the jail, we still have to buy the books. Sure. And the books, mm -hmm. you know, are, are an expense. Sure, so. and that allows everyone to have one and they keep those exactly. and that's part right. of the process. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I am so grateful for each one of you being here today. I want to thank Christy Batts from uh, uh, Crossroads Incorporated being here. I want to thank Karen Burton from Paducah Cooperative Ministry and Eloise. I want to thank you for sharing your some of your life story and some of how uh, this program, uh, Breaking Barriers, has helped out. Uh, it's because of all the individual supporters and the 40 plus congregations and faith groups here in Paducah that allow ministries and programs like this to take place. And so we encourage you to continue to pray for and to be active in Paducah Cooperative Ministry. If you want more information, please contact Paducah Cooperative Ministry. You can go online and check them out at Paducah Co-op Ministry. Dot org. You can find out all the ministries that Paducah Cooperative Ministry offers, ways you can get involved. And you can even watch this program online just by going to uh, Paducah Channel 2 and looking it up or even going to the PCM website. I'm Jay Gottman from First Christian Church, and we thank you for watching and thank you for being a part of Reflections today. In